Ladies and gentlemen, it's commonly known AMD employ a strategy when designing their processors along with other products known as a leapfrog strategy. In a nutshell, this means that as one product is just about to hit the market, another couple of teams are working on the successors. So for example, as product A is being ready to the market, uh, its successor will have been worked on by team B and the successor to that product is being worked on by Team C. This means that you can have dialogue between all of your design teams, and not only does this mean that each product can build upon the successes of the other, but you can also learn and perhaps even improve the current product. If, for example, a feature is ready early, you can perhaps bring that forward. To this end, AMD have accidentally uh, revealed some of the details for not only Zen 5, but also Zen 6 a little bit early. Well, I say AMD, I should actually say a rather keen employee courtesy of LinkedIn. We're going to be discussing the Zen 6 information in this video, along with a few bits that I've personally been hearing. But first of all, let's talk about the disclosures on LinkedIn. Importantly, we also are given code names. Now, of course, Various aspects of processors, along with different processor lines, will also have their own code names. But Zen 4, uh, Zen 4, excuse me, is of course built on 5NM and is known as Persephone. Zen 5 is Nirvana on 3NM, have an asterisk there, and Morpheus is Zen 6 on 2NM. However, Again, we have a little more detail and clarification thanks to, well, this LinkedIn post. You can read yourself, and there are also some interesting details concerning the timelines. Now, obviously, these are certain aspects of the chip. For example, power management, which is what this individual specifically was working on. So, for example, Zen 4 had, well, he was working on it for under a year, about nine months-ish. I'm going to be rounding up and down the time for everyone's sanity, whereas it's almost two years for Nirvana and Morpheus, well, they've just started the development. And again, I want to stress that this is mostly on a couple of aspects of the chip, because obviously one engineer, surprisingly, doesn't design the entire thing. So you have like specialist engineers, some will work on memory, some will work on X, some will work on Y. Now, there is a very important detail, and that is it specifies server. Now, to my understanding, and based upon official disclosures from AMD's own roadmaps, Zen 5 appears to be utilizing a couple of different nodes. And I've spoken about this several times at this point, but basically 4 and 3NM will be used by Zen 5. The 3NM version, I, I'm vastly simplifying here because there is some crossover with stuff like APUs, but in a nutshell, uh, processors like Ryzen desktop will be using 4NM, however, servers will be utilizing 3NM. Again, there is some crossover, but just to keep everyone's sanity, let's just say it like that. Meanwhile, to my understanding, again, I think Zen uh, 6 is using the same strategy. In fact, a source has told me that yes, 2NM is going to be for certain server processors. However, desktop users will almost certainly be still using Zen 3, I'm sorry, the 3NM process. So it's gonna be very interesting to see exactly what has changed with Zen 6, because quite honestly, I've received quite a lot of mixed messages since of course the processor is so early in development, it's hard to know what is actually just, well, basically just rumor and not actually true, or some early goals which were initially considered, but then during the planning stages they changed, and that can happen an awful lot. One source has told me that there's actually not that much difference between Zen 5 and Zen 6. Well, that's not 100% accurate. What they more mean is that it's kind of like Zen 3 to Zen 4, so there are some architectural improvements, but it's mostly revolving around power consumption and other bits and bobs. They also have told me it's possible um, that it will not be on the AM5 platform, although that doesn't seem to be 100% decided yet. Ultimately, these chips, the ones based on Zen 6, I mean, are not going to launch you know, next year or anything like that. We're looking at products which are going to launch several years into the future. Therefore, AMD can certainly make a lot of changes before the actual launch of the processor. I am going to be very curious, though, to see how this stacks up against Intel, given Intel's roadmap does appear to be pretty decent. There's going to be some oddities on the desktop, like, for example, the fact that Raptor Lake refresh is essentially going to be the 14th generation processors, and Meteor Lake is going to become, 
Well, basically released at the same time as Arrow Lake, with the Meteor Lake processors essentially taking over the duties of like i3 and i5, and Arrow Lake being the highest end SKU, so for example i7s and i9s. But of course that means that in the lower end there's going to be some, some hinky things, because well, it's not just like there's a difference in core count, there's going to be IPC differences and other things as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I'm going to be very curious, though, to see what occurs on the PC marketplace over the next couple of years on the CPU side of things. There's also been a lot of rumors, of course, in terms of the improvement in performance versus one generation to the other. I've personally put out several rumors. I'm hearing around 20, 25%. I'm going to remain pessimistic for now until, well, I get better details. But I do think that it's quite possible that Zen 5 will bring around a 20, 25% single thread uh, improvement. I don't think clock frequencies are going to be going through the stratosphere. I think they're going to probably just maybe go a little higher, maybe a couple of hundred megahertz or something like that over Zen 4. But yeah, um, just a short video for today, guys. Um, I'm rather excited, actually, for Zen 5. I think a lot of folks, by the time, you know, Zen 5 does roll around, they're probably going to be ready to invest in the AM5 platform. I think that um, Zen 4, you know, if you... I think Zen 4 was a little unfortunate in some ways because it kind of had to deal with following up after things like the 5800X3D. And obviously that processor for gamers has just been, it's just been amazing, honestly. Um, and Intel themselves have actually been relatively competitive. You know, we can make arguments all day long about power consumption and all of that stuff. But obviously at the end of the day, Raptor Lake launched first. And I think a lot of folks just upgraded who had maybe a creaking AM4 board, you know, like one of the early ones. And they didn't really want to go the Vcash route. So I think that the market is going to change a lot by the time uh, Zen 5 and especially Zen 6 uh, comes to comes into fight uh, whatever Intel has to offer. But yeah, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye for now.